hit town at a trot after a wreck or two, but we hit town at a trot and I looked back and I saw all those horses had sucked in together. They were all lined out in the middle of the line and they were looking going, where the hell are we? Because this is not Kansas anymore. They all sucked right into a bunch and they followed us right into that pasture. They did the right thing. They were, they were, <laughs> they were not going to screw up downtown. They didn't want to end up in somebody's backyard. They, they just all lined right out and they were part of us. It was good. <laughs> Then that night we stay in Three Forks, which is great fun. It's like, um, I heard stories about Three Forks, how they used to send their um, their naughty teenage boys back in the turn of the century time to go out and learn hard work and, and from the cities. They used to send them to Three Forks to learn hard work and, and labor in a, a good way of life. And the guys just, you know, ripped up the town. And instead of learning how to be good cowboys, they learned how to party, I guess, is what they did, but I kind of think of those old days, you know, when we stay at that old hotel. Stinky shaps and and dirty, dirty, smelly cowboys, we'd stumble into that ho old hotel and I'm, listen to the fiddlers and whoop it up and eat really good food. Eric and, and Elaine Kelly and me, Austin Dreyer. All right. group is we kind of stick together and we kind of want to because we're having our whole old little world going on the whole town turns out for this thing the whole town and all the neighboring towns come in to three forks to see the horses come through they go to the show uh to the red steagle show with us and then we kind of all split back off again uh, have some really good dinner and um that night we have uh sid strummy and his cowboy swing band play and we just dance the night away. I think they were up till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Hardwood floors out in the middle Someday, of the Sacramento Hotel. It's a great time. I might change my restless wandering Change all my ways But for now I gotta move along To another place Another town Traveling most all my life. I've known a lot of women, but.
but I never took a wife. But for some, it's just our way. I met a cowboy. That's how I got involved in the Gone horse business. And uh, I really was just a horse crazy girl. When everybody in high school and junior high had pictures of boys on their wall, I had pictures of horses on mine. And I think girls, especially at a certain age, and horses kind of tend to go together. There are a lot of really horse-crazy girls in this world. So who would have thought that years later I would actually get that dream? Because there was a zillion dreams in between my original dream of doing what I am doing today and actually doing what I am doing today. And those dreams that I had in between didn't happen. But the real original one did, and it, I think that's pretty cool. I don't think that I could have dreamed a better life for myself. I did dream it. And I met Kale out of college on my way to law school. Um, God thank him for saving me, I guess, because I live a life now where I hear horses every day. I see horses every day. I, I live that dream life that I thought was really cool, and it is kind of cool. I don't think there's anything better than in the morning waking up and hearing horses walking outside my, my door, or hearing them in the night whinny back and forth to one another, or knowing them and having them come up to you when you're walking out there. and they've, There's just something pretty neat about that. They trust you completely. They are expecting you to do the right thing. And you, in turn, expect them to do the right thing. And it's a pretty good relationship when that works out. And if you really love horses, and there's a difference. A lot of people think they love horses, and they don't. They don't like them, even. But if you really love horses, you just can't imagine living life without them in it. It's a little different when you're not raised in it. I see Mickey and Kale and Dar and Lonnie and the Mantles, you know, and they're, they were just born with that knowledge. They were raised in it. And it's a little different when you're an adult and you have to learn it. When you have, you, your body doesn't work that way. You know, your, your instincts don't work that way. You have to learn that. And as an adult, that's, that's difficult, I think. You don't, you're not born with the ability to know that many horses in that kind of an environment. We're going home today. No, we went through three or four fences there yesterday right before town, but I don't think we'll have that today. The baseball diamond is probably what got us yesterday, the softball. The softball guys made a home run just as we was coming through town and losing that bell went off all at the same time, so if I had a horse, I wouldn't know any. 24 riders. I think we've got, what, 30? 17 on horseback. 20, 25, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> I heard 39. Maybe 45 riders. North Carolina, we've got some Phoenix, Arizona, San Francisco, Montana. We're taking 300 and some odd horses to our home in Three Forks. About 350 to 400. I heard 360. 350 to 400. I don't know. <laughs> 350, 360. Between 350 and 400. 350, 360. <laughs> 360. Could get a little western. I want about four guys in the back again. You'll all be listening to Barb. Whatever she tells you, do that. You want to keep that back end a little tighter today, but I don't want you running over the front. That's going to be a fine line. She'll tell you whether or not you're going too fast or too slow. If you lose one horse, You've lost everything. Abandon whatever you were doing and try to get around the lead because the lead will change from the front to the back like it did yesterday in a matter of seconds. That's when you get crazy and start squalling and hollering and try to keep them going the right way. If they run over you, then we're going to horse race try to get to the front. The riders along the side are going to keep pushing the horses into the center on that open road. There'll be no fences on this side. There'll be no fences on that side. That means that we're going to have riders, probably 10 on each side, keeping the horses centered. It's going to resemble a flying wedge as we go. Just keep pushing horses behind. If you got horses behind you out here, you've already lost. Get around them. A couple things. We're going to cross these guardrails up here. We have got to have these horses inside the guardrails before we get there. Or if they get on the outside of the guardrails, they are about that thin and them horses can't get back. They're going to try to jump it and they'll cut a leg off. We need probably two, three riders that are aggressive with whips to keep them pointed on both sets of those guardrails. I want Bill, Mel, and Butch 
I want you guys on those guardrail crossings. That's three. I need one more guy. Bar or uh, genie. Christy, I want you in the lead where you at. Anything, Lonnie? Well, the thing I can say is uh, when we cross, we get them going good, and we get to cross them that interstate. We don't want to crowd them too close. If we hit them too hard behind, we're going to knock a horse over the top of that on top of a car coming down that interstate. Guys, Mark, you're on top of that. Back off. Let them horses string out. And then the, you know where the Madison Crossing is on the front of the road? There's another one just like it there. All right, lead men, come over here so I can see who I got on my team here. Pavement is great for cars, ain't worth a damn for horseshoes, it's slick. And you can't make the turns and, and be as aggressive as you could before because your horses don't have the stability under their feet as that they had before. The, uh, uh, our shod horses have got toed and heeled shoes on all of our saddle horses. That helps a little. Our western horseman guy, uh, his horse actually lost his footing there in town at Three Forks and down he went and spilled him out like a can of beans right out in front of God and everybody right on the yellow line in the town of Three Forks. And he rides real well. So it can happen to anybody. You know, you gotta be someplace and you're not thinking about anything and try to turn your old horse and down you go. Cars and people and stuff like that, they, they don't really have that much effect on our horses by the time we get there. If they were all standing right outside the pasture, our horses might be a little reluctant to go out the gate, but uh, by the time we get to town, usually we've got them under control and they're, they're kind of understanding the program. Again. A guy should go out, or a woman should go out and try to do something that scares them a little bit every day. And uh, with this horse drive, I think that we, we allow people to do that. We allow them to, to accomplish things they didn't think were even possible. Some people that are, that are, are almost deathly afraid of horses. At the, at the beginning of this last trip, we made them come to the lead and, and accomplish some things they didn't think they could do. And uh, I think that, that uh, by doing that, It'll help them in other parts of their life too. And I don't know whether it's adrenaline or... By, by doing something that you're deathly afraid of, I think you, you get a satisfaction that nobody can take away from you. I don't believe, I, I don't think that you, I, I don't, you can't, this, you can't fake this. This is something that, uh, it's, it's personal, it's individual, it's something that you know whether you did it or not. You know whether you stayed in the back and played it safe or whether you went to the front and actually made a difference. I don't believe that anybody can fake that, nor do I think you can describe it. You can say what you want, anywhere in the world about your riding abilities and all that but when you get here it ain't going to take but about three seconds to, to get through it and everybody's going to know and it don't make any difference i mean it's the more truthful that you are about about what you can and can't do will probably allow you to have a lot better time on this team. girl that was that was on this that was probably a little uh, a little less experienced than than I would uh, recommend coming on this ride but uh, we got her to the lead and uh, she started out pretty meek and we let her ride for two days towards the back of the herd at just a kind of a trot and on the third day I went and got her and I uh, told her that she had to do she wasn't gonna go with me she pretty much locked up on me, I wasn't gonna come to the front. And uh, the rest of the group had the horses under control so I could go back and pick on people and I don't necessarily, I'm not opposed to that. So I went and got her and uh, I said, all right, Shannon, I didn't have to grab her lead rope and make her go, but I said, all right, Shannon, fall in behind me here, let's go. 
And she goes, I can't. I said, yeah, you can. Let's go. You got to do something every day. 